Hey class, and welcome back to another fun uh, sample problem of torque equilibrium, or rigid body equilibrium. So here we're told we have a wrecking ball that has a weight of 5,550 newtons that's being supported by a boom, which is this unit here, this object here, and the boom has a weight of 3,690 newtons. And just on that information and the angles given to us here, we're asked to figure out two things. One, what is the tension in this support cable? And two, what is the reaction force, the magnitude of the force at point P? So, sounds good. The first thing that you need to do anytime you're solving a problem like this is you need to start by figuring out, okay, what is my rigid body and what does a free body diagram look like for that object? So in this problem, the rigid body, the thing that all those forces are affecting is the boom. So we're gonna have to draw a free body diagram for the boom, observing that there's a tension pulling here, there's a weight of the wrecking ball, there's a weight of the boom, and there's a reaction force in the X and a reaction force in the Y at point P. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's our boom, boom. Okay, and so now let's draw a free body diagram for it. So acting up here, we have this tension so we'll call it capital T, and we know that it's at a 32 degree angle relative to the horizontal. I'm gonna draw this a little bit cleaner here. In fact, I'm gonna just draw my whole picture a little cleaner. So let's, uh, for the boom, I'm just gonna use a single straight line here. All right, and now my tension I'll do in blue, just go in this direction, so that's T and that's at a 32 degree angle, all right? So if you want, it doesn't hurt to start keeping track of your variables at, at any point. So we can observe that Tx is gonna be T times the cosine of 32, and Ty is gonna be T times the sine of 32, noting that Tx and Ty are both really in the negative direction, so you're welcome to put negative signs in there if you'd like. Next, we have the boom. So the weight of the boom is acting at its center, going down, so we'll call that the weight of the boom. And then we have the weight of the wrecking ball up here, so that's the weight of the wrecking ball. And lastly, we have the forces at P, so I'm going to call this PY and this PX. Now this is a pin force, right, as a result of like a pin or something going through point P. So a lot of people are inclined to want to say that P is at a 48 degree angle so we could break P down into X and Y components, but that's not true. We don't know that it's acting exactly along the boom. It might be, but we don't know that. So we don't want to go ahead and make any assumptions about that fact, okay? So that's what we got going on. Now, if we want to solve, as always, we can do some of the forces in the X, some of the forces in the Y, and some of the torque. So, let's say we did some of the forces in the X equals zero. For that, we're going to have PX and then minus T cosine 32, because that's TY, or TX, excuse me, and that's all. That equals zero, right? So, we can say PX is going to be equal to T cosine 32, but we don't know either of those values, so we can't solve. We can then move on to some of the forces in the Y, also equal to zero since we're in torque equilibrium. And in the Y, we're going to have PY in the positive minus T sine 32 minus the weight of the boom minus the weight of the wrecking ball. And again, that equals zero, and we don't know T or PY, and so again, we can't solve yet. We could say, okay, well, if we do get T, PY is going to be equal to the weight of the boom plus the weight of the wrecking ball plus T times the sine of 32, but we still can't solve yet. So while that all looks fun and good, we're going to have to start with looking at some of the torques since we can't yet solve. So I'm going to do some of the torque down here equals zero, and I'm going to choose point P as my axis of rotation. And the reason that I'm choosing point P as my axis of rotation is because point P down here has two of our forces acting at it. So two of our unknown forces, I should say. So if I choose point P, what that means then is I'm going to eliminate two unknowns. All right, so now we wanna go ahead and start 
setting up some of our torques about point P. So first of all, we can observe that we're going to have torque due to the tension. We're gonna to have torque due to the weight of the boom and the weight of the wrecking ball. So the tension is gonna be the only one causing a positive torque, all right? So there's a couple different ways that you can go about setting up, thinking about the tension. I'm gonna show you one option. So rather than having to do a bunch of different geometry up here, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, one second, I'm trying to erase the, my tension here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tension, completely erase it, and I'm gonna just go ahead and think about it as if it's two different forces, Tx and Ty. So now what I can do is I can think about those in terms of their individual components and the torque that each component causes. So I'm gonna have Tx generating a positive torque and its perpendicular distance. If I go, here's my line of action. So this here would be my perpendicular distance here, right, to my axis. And that distance is gonna be, if this is 48 degrees, that's really, um, well, let's see. To help you visualize this, I'm actually gonna pop over here real quick and make a little triangle. So here's our boom. Let's call the length of our boom L. We know that this is 48 degrees. So this opposite side over here is L times the sine of 48. And this adjacent side is L times the cosine of 48. All right, so what we see then when we're looking at, let me get this adjusted correctly here. When we're looking at the perpendicular distance for Tx is it's gonna be Tx multiplied by that opposite side of L sine of 48. Then Ty is gonna be a negative torque minus Ty, which is gonna be multiplied by its perpendicular distance, which is this distance here. All right, which we know now is L cosine of 48. The distance to the weight of the wrecking ball is also the same, so minus again, because it's causing clockwise rotation, the weight of the wrecking ball times L cosine 48. And then for the weight of the boom, it's also negative weight of the boom multiplied by L cosine 48 divided by two, because it's only halfway, right? It's at the halfway point. So you're gonna to wanna to divide it by two. And now that accounts for all four forces that are generating torque, so that's set equal to zero. So one problem some people run into with this one is like, wait a second, I don't know the length of the boom. We're not told that. So what we observe though is look, guess what? In this equation, weight, or excuse me, the length is in all terms. I can divide through by the length of the boom. Those all go away. And in fact, let's go ahead and divide by the cosine of 48 as well to make things simpler. All right, so now I'm gonna rewrite my equation after making those simplifications. Tx is T cosine 32, and then sine of 48 over cosine of 48 is tangent of 48, all right? Minus Ty is T sine 32, minus the weight of the wrecking ball, and minus the weight of the boom over two equals zero. Don't forget this one half here. Now T is our only unknown in this equation. So we can go ahead and solve for T. So if I factor out T on this side, I'm gonna have T times the cosine of 32 multiplied by the tangent of 48 minus sine of 32, because we're factored out the T from both terms. And that equals, moving the things to the other side, the weight of the wrecking ball plus the weight of the boom over two. And so now our T, our tension, is just gonna be equal to this side over this whole thing. So we have the weight of the wrecking ball, which was, um, let's see, 5,000, oh, sorry. My hand was hitting different buttons there, I apologize. So it's 5,550 newtons plus 
the weight of the boom, which was 3,690 newtons over two, and all of that is being divided by cosine 32 times the tangent of 48, and then minus the sine of 32. So you plug and chug, do the math, and after a lot of fun work in algebra, we find that the tension should come out to be equal to approximately 17,950 newtons, or approximately 18,000 newtons. Now you're almost done, but we forgot that we also need to find the magnitude of the force at P. So we can come up here, plug in, take our tension times the cosine of 32, and we should find that Px comes out to be about, uh, I believe, 15,000 200 newtons doing the same. PY comes out to be equal to 18,750 newtons. And so to find my magnitude of P, it's going to be equal to the square root of PX squared plus PY squared. Plugging in those two values, this should come out to approximately 24,000 newtons. So that is one serious problem, right? This is the kind of thing I could give you on an exam, and I bet you guys could crush it now that you've seen it. It's tricky for sure, and I apologize. Notice as I zoomed out, my font size changed a little bit. So sorry about that, but I think it's all legible. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions, and yeah, hope you had fun with that one.